scripture for this morning, and we ask that you stand. It's found in the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And we will begin at verse 19. I still hear a few pages turning. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh, having a high priest over the house, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast with the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and understanding of his word. You may be seated.
have no nothing but the blood of Jesus. I, I, I can be honest with you. I didn't understand from a theological or biblical perspective what all that meant. But I knew as a child that there was something about the blood of Jesus. There was another song that captured my thinking as a child. It says, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it shall never lose its power. It reaches the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. I didn't understand what it meant, but when I heard the word that said it reaches to the highest mountain, I saw some mountains, I experienced some mountains, and I know that's high, and I've been in some valleys, and I saw how low, and I didn't understand it, but when they said that his blood and the power, it flows to the lowest valley, and it reaches, that, that meant something to me. Didn't fully appreciate it. Didn't fully understand it, but I knew that the blood had me covered no matter where I was, mountain high or valley low. So I thought I would talk to you for a few moments today on the topic of the power of the blood. Now, I ask you to turn to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Are you there? Yeah. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And it, I'm going to start at verse 11. It says, in every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. In other words, the priests go through their routine. They go through that ritual, but it does not take away sin. But this man, oh, I like that. This man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down. Jesus did what needed to be done. And when he said it's finished, came back for 40 days and was ascended to God the Father, he sat down, the Bible says, at the right hand of God. And from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstools. In other words, he's still waiting. But the enemy will be his footstools. And it says in 14, for by one offering, Hmm. He has what? <coughs> oh my God. He has what? <laughs> Forever who? <laughs> now, now you need to look at that. He has perfected forever those who are being sanctified, set apart. He has perfected those who are being sanctified. That, that means you both. He has what? Perfected. The preacher, I've been told nobody's perfect. Tell your neighbor, you may have a conundrum, but I don't. The word of God says right here. Come on, take the word of The word of God says right here. He has, he has perfected me. me. Y'all see that? I'm, I'm not making this stuff up. <laughs> he has perfected those who are being 
And it's not me perfecting me. It is he who has what? But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with him after those things of the Lord, I will put my law into the hearts and in their minds. I will write them. Y'all see that? Tell your neighbor, it's in you. It's in you. Amen. So even if you don't read it, it's in you. All right. Then he adds, their sins and their lawlessness or iniquity, I will what? No so he has forgotten those things that you're still holding on to that are keeping you from your destiny. He's forgotten them. He released them. He let them go. Someone says, thank you, amen, brother, amen, amen. Now, 18 says, now where there is no remission of these, there is, I'm sorry, now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Once it was done, it was done. Amen. Now, verse 19 says, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiness, by the what? Blood. The blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he consecrated for who? Us. For us through the veil that is his blood or his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God let us, say let us yes. draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Y'all see that? Amen. Draw where? Draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our body washed with pure water. Then let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Now, 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 I, I told you about those old songs and those old songs. They touched my spirit. They touched my spirit. Because it was talking about the atonement of Christ. Amen. And then as the song, even the writer here, talks about the blood and what Jesus' blood did. Amen. What Jesus' blood did is completed that what God had started when men and sin separated themselves from God. God has always wanted a relationship with you. Amen. God has always wanted a relationship with his creation. And sin separated that, and God was not pleased with the separation. And so what God did in the fullness of time, he sent Jesus. Aren't you glad about it? Because what you could not do and what I could not do for ourselves, God sent Jesus, and Jesus came as a work of propitiation. In other words, he became the substitute for sin. Understand this, beloved. The Bible said the wages of sin is what? Yeah. But then it says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, Jesus had to come. He had to come because he had not come when our lives at the end would have been over. Amen. Because here's what happens. When God speaks a word, his word is true. Amen. When God says something, it has to be done. And the Bible says that Jesus told Adam and Eve, the day that you sin, you will surely die. But grace and mercy showed up even in the garden. God recognized that the estrangement needed a sacrifice. And the Bible says before the very foundations of the world were made, God already had the plan of salvation in effect. Amen. Aren't you glad God thought about it before you were born? Aren't you glad God prepared it before you were born? Because if he had not, every matter of fact, I'm going to say it like this. I was going to say every sin that you committed would say death, but the first sin would have been death. Yes. Yes. See, justice tries out. Justice says, God, you cannot lie. You said that the wage or the payment for sin is death. So Doris has got to die. 
Miss Doris is wrong. She's got to die. But I'm so glad that God thought about Doris and me and all of us before justice could demand its due. Because what justice demanded, mercy said, hold it. Just wait one moment. As a matter of fact, mercy said, I don't even have to plead a case. I've already paid the price. Aren't you glad about it? And so the writer here in Hebrews teaches us about the atonement of Christ when he talks about the blood and what Jesus did. And what I like, and I shared it with you, he says, Jesus perfected us. He perfected us through the blood. See, when God looks at you, what he sees is the blood. You've been blood purchased. And God sees the blood. And when God sees the blood, what God sees is the perfected you. God sees the perfected you. You may not see it, and that's okay. You don't have to see it. What you got to do is believe what God sees. My wife and I, 16 years ago, we moved in this area and we, we found a house. And we've been looking at a lot of houses. Now, none of the houses we looked at were the house that we would have built if we built it ourselves. But since we're not builders, we had to look at what was out there. And we found a house and we said, that house is perfect for us. Now that didn't mean we settled for everything we saw, but we saw potential in the house. And she recognized that with her skill set, it was my sweat equity. We could make that house be perfect for us. Somebody missed that. <laughs> see, God looked at you and said, what I see is perfect for me. Matter of fact, what God said was this. Who here, who here ever bought a house? I mean, when you buy a house, when they get when they think you're serious about the house, what do they ask you for? Earnest, Earnest money. That means you're serious. And so the Bible said that the earnest of God on the house that he's purchasing is the down payment of his Holy Spirit living in you. It might not be everything. You might not be everything right now that you want to be, and even what God wants you to be. But God says, you're perfect. And I'm paying my down payment by putting the earnest in you. And he who has begun a good work in you will complete it or perfect it. Every day, why? Because he's conforming you or remodeling you and making you in the image of his son. Ah, he looks at you yeah. and he sees you as perfect. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he sees the blood. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he sees what Jesus did for you because he loved you and you're covered in the blood so you are perfected. Mm -hmm. See, having that attitude, having that mindset means that a lot of the stuff you confront in life would not be a problem if you saw yourself as God sees you. Folk trying to deny you, folk trying to keep you out. You up half the night trying to wonder and worry about how you get over when the Bible is very clear. It says, you see the birds? You see the foxes? They don't worry, they don't sweat, they don't take night quill, they don't take Aunt Jenny's car, they next up they got a cold, they don't do any of this, that, and that stuff because their father takes of the birds and the fox, how much more do you think he'll take care of you? So we sweat a whole lot of stuff, we don't have to sweat. We can deal with a whole lot of stuff that we have to deal with because the blood has you covered. And I didn't even really start my message. 
showed up here any kind of which way. There was a preparation that had to be before a person, be the high priest, could get into God's presence. And on the day of atonement, there was a ceremony ritual that he had to go through. And they would put, as a matter of fact, whatever he wore into the temple, they had to take it all off. At least it'd be contaminated and not clean and pure and holy. And they put on a robe that was ceremonially clean. And the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. But before he would go into the Holy of Holies, what they did, in case they missed something, or in case the high priest had something that wasn't clean and right in his life, they tied a rope around him. And on the bottom of the robe he had, there were bells. Like little Christmas tree bells, ding 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 ding. So when they walked with ding 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 ding, they would hear it. And he would enter into the Holy of Holies and he could make sacrifice if he was right. If he wasn't right, to do. He would die. His life would be taken. That's why when they heard no more bells, they weren't going to go in again. <laughs> if the high priest can't do it, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you got to understand what I'm saying? That's how serious God was about his presence and people coming into his presence. See, God has always sought for relationship. Adam and Eve had privilege. Say they had privilege. In the cool of the day, God would come and talk with them, but sin separated them. And you need to understand something about sin. See, the first thing they thought is that they could be like God. And so they tried to be like God by eating of the fruit. And what happened is, whenever you think you can be like God or be God, there's a consequence. Uh -huh. and there's a consequence. You can't be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and there was a separation. And, and so what, what happened is, 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 is God said, I, I still want that relationship. Matter of fact, you need to understand something. Can I, can I tell y'all something? Listen, 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 listen. Worship is not our thing. It's not our thing. God told Israel in the wilderness, because once again, he sought intimacy and relationship with his people. He said, let them, I think the 25th chapter, let them make me a sanctuary that I might dwell amongst them. God has always wanted our presence. But even for him to dwell amongst them, there were, for lack of a better word, there were certain parameters, certain guidelines that would fit so that the high priest would get in to the presence of God and speak to God on behalf of the people and speak to the people on behalf of God. And that was rigid because of sin. But when Jesus died, his blood tore the curtain in half. And his blood allows those of us who have been blood brought and who have been redeemed by the power of the blood now to go into the Holy of Holies and have a dialogue with a God who wants to be our God. What God is saying to us is what I need, and this is what the power of blood does. The power of blood draws you so that you can have a conversation with your dad. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I feared my father. My father was the kind of man that played. He looked, Are you trying to buck up on me? I made you, I'll take you out. And make three or four more of them like this like <laughs> Now in my generation, I can't speak for a generation. My father told me he'd kill me and I believe him. <laughs> I didn't think my daddy lied. I didn't know it was hyperbole. I believed him. <laughs> but still yet, there were times when I would 
was in trial and tribulation and struggle, I wanted nothing more than to be able to talk to my father, my daddy, daddy, I need you. And sometimes it was difficult to get there because of the fear. But with our God, with our Father saying this right now, because of Jesus, because my son gave his blood, I'm now giving you access to be able to come and talk to me. Yes, I want you to fear me, but that fear is a respect. But I want to talk to you like your father would talk to you. You're my child. Come, come to me. See, that's the first thing the power of the blood gives you. It gives you access to the Father. I don't care what you have done or what you're planning on doing. Look at your neighbor, he said it. <laughs> but don't you do it. Your Father already knows what you've done. I don't care how heinous it is, how despicable it is, I don't care how wrong it is, he knew before you were born that you were going to do it, so you can't hide from him. Amen. So when he's providing his access, the blood is providing you access to your father. Yeah. He wants to have a conversation. Little boy was praying one night. His mother happened to overhear the prayer. And uh, he was saying, Dear Andy, I love you, and Andy, if you could, would you bless mommy, dad? <laughs> <laughs> and grandma, my sister, Andy, um, there's a little bully down the street who has been bothering me. And Andy, if you could, would you please allow him not to be so much of a bully and know that I'm his friend. And he kept talking to Andy and praying to Andy. And so when he finished, he said, good night, Andy, and got in bed. So his mother went over and she said, Jimmy, I, I heard you pray to Andy, and I, I just wonder, can you help me understand why you, you're praying to Andy? He said, well, um, I was at the church, and uh, they were singing a song. It said, Andy walks with me. <laughs> Andy talks with me. And he tells me I am the soul. And so God's name is Andy. And what I'm saying to you today right now, Andy wants you to talk with you. And he wants you to walk with him. And he wants you to let you know that he is. Yo, Dad. You want to call me Andy? That's okay. Because Andy walked with me. Andy talks with me. Andy tells me. Folks, I didn't even get to any of my points. Mm -hmm. I got to his points. I got to his points. But we'll, we'll finish this message. We'll finish this message. I sincerely pray that you will begin to understand at least one thing. Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. And he shed his blood. And his blood is the power that transforms your life. You don't have to worry about your insecurities, your fears, your anxieties. The blood has already covered that. We're right now in the 10th chapter, and the next chapter, the 11th chapter, is called the Hall of Faith. What chapter 10 does, it sets up chapter 11. Because you see, all those folks in chapter 11, even before the blood was shed, they had faith in he who was coming to shed his blood. Yeah. See, the great thing about God is God knows how to take care of his business. He can handle his business. Because when Jesus died, what he did is every sin 
from Adam up to Jesus' death was clean. Every sin in the 32 years, 33 years he was there was cleansed. And every sin from the time he ascended up until the time he comes in is already been taken care of. But what is happening is this. You have to have faith in the blood to recognize that the blood cleansed and brought you. And it brings you into a relationship with God the Father. You don't have to fear him. And see, sin will keep us from going into God's presence. Because we think, well, I, 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 I've done wrong. He says, I know it. Come anyway. I'm not worthy. He says, yes, you are. Come anyway. I don't want to say, come anyway. The blood gives you free access, say free access, free access. to the Father. If you don't get anything else when I finish this message, Recognize that the blood has redeemed you, it has saved you, and it gives you access to the Father. Yeah. Lord, we thank you that there is power in the blood. We thank you, God, for loving us enough that Jesus shed his blood. And sanctify the sense of God for holy purpose. But most of all, God, it gives us access to you.